Have you heard about HRV and you're wondering, well, what's all this fuss about? Why are some people so obsessed with heart rate variability, measuring it and knowing what theirs is day to day? Well, in today's video, we're gonna unpack heart rate variability, understand what it is, what is it actually looking at, and why would it be so important for us to measure it, monitor it, and what could we do to actually improve it on a regular basis? So let's start with what is HRV? HRV is heart rate variability. What does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds like. It's the variation between heartbeats. As an example, if somebody's heart rate was 60 beats per minute, you could think that, okay, that's one beat every second of every minute. If someone's heart rate was literally perfectly timed to be one beat every second for 60 seconds, their heart rate variability would actually be very low. It's not variable, it's very consistent and timed. And so that would sound like, you know, boom, 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 right? Just like a metronome. Somebody with higher heart rate variability could also have 60 beats per minute, but there's much more variation between those beats. Boom, 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 right? I'm obviously exaggerating, but just to understand the difference between a low variability and a high variability. Often in cases where we're implanting devices like a pacemaker to keep someone's heart on pace, we calculate it at very specific intervals. Many people would think that the more consistent their heart rate is, in other words, like a metronome, boom, 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 the healthier they would be. But the opposite is actually true. The more variation you have, the higher the variation, the healthier your heart is, the healthier your nervous system is. Why is that? Well, we all know that we live in a very unpredictable world. And so increased heart rate variability means that my body is able and willing to adapt to a changing environment very quickly. I could be sitting here very relaxed. We're having this conversation. All of a sudden, the fire alarm goes off. I need to jump up and run out of the building. Or I've been running errands all day and cooking. We ate dinner. I'm trying, you know, and now, and now it's time to wind down. It's time to relax. I go from like my high energy day to winding down into dinner, into my parasympathetics, and into really preparing my body for sleep. I need to be able to create variations in my heart rate to match the needs of my body at any given time. The more predictable and the less variable my heart rate is, the less able or willing my body is to adapt and to change to that ever-changing environment. So the first concept that I really wanna nail down is healthier hearts have higher variation, less healthy hearts have less variation. Healthier nervous systems allow for higher levels of variation. More stressed, less healthy nervous systems do not want variation. So heart rate variability has become much more well-known, and now we have so many different ways to measure it. You used to have to go to a doctor's office and have a moderately complex in-office test in order to really understand and know what your heart rate variability is. Now we all have watches and rings and different wearables that are literally monitoring heart rate variability on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis. If we allow ourselves to do that, that gives us a window directly into our autonomic nervous system as to how well am I tolerating the stressors that I'm being exposed to in this moment, day to day, week to week, and month to month? The quality of our life is directly related to the quality of the signals that our nervous system can manage. The more clearly our nervous system can bring information from the outside world in, make sense out of that information, and then create appropriate responses for that information or adapt to the changes from that information, the healthier, more resilient we are. And if we have a strategy that we think should be improving our health over time, we should absolutely be able to measure that through a consistent heart rate variability measurement. So if you're not already measuring your heart rate variability, I'm hoping that this video gives you the information you need to make a decision to say, hey, this is something I should definitely be looking at. We are on a mission to make sure that the people looking for this information have access to it. I know that there's a lot of content out there and I know that it could be very confusing when people are trying to find the answers that they're looking for. And it's really important for me that those people can find these answers. So when you like it, when you subscribe and when you share these videos, that helps the people looking for this content know that they're getting a trustworthy source and they're getting the information that they're trying to find. So please do that and help us help other people. In some of the clinics that I consult for, every patient gets a wearable device in order to be monitoring this so that they can also see the changes in their body over a series of weeks and months throughout their treatment plan. There is no perfect device. Each device measures this a little bit differently, and they use algorithms to generate the variability numbers and you know different programs to graph those changes. Some devices seem to measure activity level, heart rate variability. 
and moment to moment heart rate variability a little bit better. Some devices tend to measure the heart rate variability through your sleep more accurately. And so it also depends what we're trying to capture. Aura Ring is a great choice. Garmin and Apple Watches. Whoop it also specializes specifically in parameters like heart rate variability. Most of these devices aren't perfect. They're not exceptionally accurate, but most of them are very precise, meaning it may not be the exact correct number, but if we keep measuring it over and over again, we get clusters of similar information of data points so that we can see the trends over time. And that's really what we're looking for. As I said earlier, I have found that certain devices measure daytime activity better and certain devices measure nighttime activity better. So I've used either a Garmin watch or a Whoop during the day and or for activity purposes, but I specifically rely on the Aura Ring for my nighttime information. If tracking any of these metrics are interesting to you and you wanna be able to track your nighttime HRV, but in addition, your light sleep, your deep sleep and your REM sleep and really get a better understanding of the quality of your night, Aura Ring is really fabulous for that. And we have a link in the description below where you can get an Aura Ring for yourself. With regard to wearables and hyperbaric oxygen, I also wanna make a few things clear. A lot of these devices, especially overnight, they're measuring your resting heart rate, they're measuring your deep sleep, your REM sleep, your light sleep, and your heart rate variability. And then there's an algorithm that gives people a score. Your sleep last night was an 85, your sleep last night was a 72, right? But they're computing all of that, and each one of those variables has a different amount of weight in those algorithms. Something important for you to know is that if you're already tracking that and you start using hyperbaric, you may find yourself in a pattern that I happen to see a lot. Let me describe that pattern. Your heart rate variability starts to go up. And what I'm telling you from this video, that's an amazing feature. Seeing your heart rate variability increase means that your nervous system and your heart are continuing to improve in their health, their resilience, and their ability to adapt to a changing environment. That being said, most people also see a raise in their resting heart rate overnight, at least for the first three or four weeks that they're using the device. And I'm saying this out loud to you because most of these algorithms use resting heart rate as a very heavily weighted component to the algorithm. So even though heart rate variability is going up, which I would say is probably one of the most important variables to monitor, if resting heart rate also goes up, your score may fall. And if you're not looking for that, you may be just looking at your score. I had an 85, an 85, an 85. I started hyperbaric, I got a 74. Oh man, hyperbaric's worse for my sleep. However, if your REM went up and your deep sleep went up and your heart rate variability went up and your resting heart rate went up a few beats, I promise you, stay the course because you will see heart rate variability continue to climb, your deep sleep and REM sleep continue to climb, and eventually, after about a month, your resting heart rate will come back down and then your scores will skyrocket. I believe that one of the reasons resting heart rate goes up is because we heal while we're sleeping. Growth factors are released while we're sleeping. And now that you're getting this increased level of oxygen on a regular basis and you're stimulating the anabolic process of healing and recovery, you're releasing stem cells, you're releasing growth factors, your body's going into a parasympathetic and a healing mode. But it seems like for the first three to four weeks that people go through that transition, that increased heart rate must be associated with this increased capacity to heal. But like I said, I've always also seen it drop back to baseline and in many cases, often even go lower. So hyperbaric oxygen does play a role in improving heart rate variability for just about everybody who's monitoring and watching. What else can we do to improve heart rate variability? Well, again, heart rate variability is really a reflection of your autonomic nervous system. The health of your autonomic nervous system is really determining what your heart rate variability is going to be. So anything else that we can do to challenge our system and adapt, challenge and adapt. We call that hormesis. Not too long ago, we did a six video series on hormesis. And we talked about lots of different strategies for stimulating the hormetic effect. Diet variation, fasting, temperature regulation like sauna and ice, PEMF, red light therapy, all the different strategies that you probably are aware of, seen, or are using yourself also stimulate heart rate variability. Exercise is probably one of the most well-known, but along with heart rate variability comes this adaptation component. So once you create a strategy of improving your health, and then you're monitoring your HRV and watching it increase, as you then adapt to that program, you will either plateau or even see heart rate variability coming down, meaning it's time to change your routine. So not only can you use this tool as a way to see is what I'm doing for my health improving my autonomic nervous system, you can also use it to tell when is it time for me to change my program. 
And so it's an incredible tool for both improving our health in the short term, as well as improving our life for decades to come. So hopefully this information helps to answer why heart rate variability is so important, why so many people are excited about measuring it. The fact that it's gotten so easy to measure gives you no excuse. You should be measuring yours as well. So grab a wearable, track your progress, and check us out on our next video.